Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Hope you are having a great day. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one, about OP, who complained about her half-sister to her grandparents and made them disinherit her. Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I was an affair baby. My mom had no idea that my dad was married until after she got pregnant and he vanished. She did her best to raise me alone, but I wanted to know who my dad was my whole life. She tried to dissuade me, but it didn't work. Eventually, she tracked him down so I could meet him. It turned out my mom was right. The only conversation I had with my dad was on the phone, and he told me I destroyed his marriage. He wanted my mom to get rid of me, and that he already had a daughter and it wasn't me. His wife filed for divorce, got his house, child support, private school tuition, and a life insurance policy with my sister as the sole beneficiary. Apparently, a house and child support weren't enough, but whatever. By the time my mom filed for child support, my dad was penniless. He paid everything he was supposed to for my sister, but nothing for me. This messed me up for years. Years of therapy and two amazing grandparents who were horrified by my dad's actions later, and I've managed to pull myself through my issues. But my sister made it difficult. My grandparents tried to get us to bond, but she would constantly make snide comments about how she'd always be an only child and daddy's girl. It wasn't until they overheard her calling me the illegitimate child they finally gave up. We're now in our 30s, and while my sister never apologized, she got a lot better and we finally started getting along. Until I found out our dad was paying into the life insurance policy well after he was obligated to. He only had to pay it until she was 18. And she used the entire thing to buy a house in one of the wealthiest parts of our city. When I confronted her about it, she told me it wasn't her fault all the money was in her name, or that our dad chose to keep paying for her life insurance policy instead of backed child support for me. I told her it's still her fault she chose to keep it all. She's been gorging on 100% of our dad's financial and emotional support, while I get 0%. She got a childhood with two parents and a house to grow up in, while I got a single mom and a tiny apartment. And now, as an adult with hindsight, my half-sister still managed to look at the last pie left by our dad and think to herself, yeah, I deserve 100% of this too. Our dad even paid for her wedding. I never even got to call him dad. I told her she hasn't changed. She really is her father's daughter and lose my number. When I told my grandparents, they were livid. They wrote her out of their will and banned her from their home. All our family gatherings go there. She threw a housewarming party and only her mom's side of the family went. No one in our dad's family has been to her house or wants to see it. Now I'm getting messages from her friends saying I'm the greedy bee who ruined her relationship with her extended family. I know I never should have expected anything from her, but I'm starting to doubt myself. Am I an a-hole? Edit. I think it's kind of weird how all the people calling me an a-hole making my grandparents cut off my sister, even though I've made it clear in comments that I never asked anyone to cut her off, are also telling me to stop blaming my sister for what our dad did. I have no more control over my grandparents than my sister does over our dad. I didn't ask anyone to rewrite their will. I didn't even know my grandparents had a will. They volunteered all of this information to me after I told them what happened. Edit 2. My dad is dead, guys. I cannot confront him. Edit 3. These comments are confusing. Everyone keeps glossing over the fact that the life insurance policy was funded for years with money that legally should have gone towards back child support. My dad literally broke the law to make sure my half-sister would get more, and I'm being told to suck it up because she's not legally obligated to share money that was put in her possession through illegal means at my expense. If she's not obligated to be decent to me, then I shouldn't be obligated to keep secrets for her so she can be protected from the fallout of her own choices. Why do I owe it to her to make sure she mends her relationship with her family when she's literally done nothing but the exact opposite to me? 
and she doesn't owe me anything? What about an apology, empathy, kindness? She be me well into our 20s. We weren't toddlers. In what way do I owe her an apology for what my grandparents did? But she doesn't owe me an apology for what she's done? This doesn't make sense. My grandparents were getting sick of her for years because she only calls them to ask for money and throws a fit every time they spend money on me, even though I never ask. Every Christmas with her is awful. She literally shows up just to collect her presents and then leaves without saying hello to my grandparents, and it really hurts their feelings. She does the same thing on Thanksgiving with the leftovers, doesn't show up until the meal is almost over, and then collects leftovers to take home even though she doesn't cook or contribute anything at all. Believe me when I say this last incident was just among many others. I'm not sure the sister is an a-hole. OP's dad never wanted a relationship with OP and chose to pour all his money into kid number one. She's obviously happy to take his money, but she's also affected by the divorce, and it's obvious by some of her comments. OP can't really expect her to deny OP's dad's money. I do think the grandparents are right though, and it would make sense that they give OP the inheritance to balance it out. This is an extremely complicated case, and OP shouldn't put all this blame on the wife and half-sister. They both got screwed over, and the wife didn't take more than she needed over the divorce. She got as much as she was legally entitled to, and good for her. It's OP's dad's fault that he never paid a dime towards OP, not the ex-wife's. The title pretty much explains it, but I will go into a little further explanation. After my grandfather died in 2015, my grandmother sat me down and explained to me how she wanted me to have her wedding ring. To say I was extremely touched by this is an understatement, because not only is it a family heirloom, it is a symbol of their 55-year love affair. I never asked for her ring or even expected it. In fact, all I asked my grandparents to leave me were the letters my grandparents sent to each other when my grandpa was in the Navy. When my grandmother passed away last year, I received her ring, the letters, and the sewing machine she taught me to sew on. I received all these items in such a way that some of my family members didn't know I was given them. I do have some family members, my brother included, who are very entitled and would have fought me over the stuff my grandmother gave me. And being who I am, I would have given them the items to avoid conflict. Knowing this, my grandmother made sure the items got to me discreetly. In fact, the only people who knew I had my grandparents' ring are my parents. Now to yesterday. My brother called me yesterday and asked if I had my grandmother's wedding ring and if he could borrow the ring to propose to his girlfriend. At first, I was very supportive of the idea, but then I began to worry because I don't think that I made it clear to him that I am just loaning him the ring, and neither him nor his fiancée get to keep it. My brother is very entitled, and unless you set clear boundaries, he will take whatever he can. I also know that most women want to keep their engagement ring. They don't just want a loner. Here is where I might be an a-hole. I am a single, 34 female, with no real intentions of getting married. But if I do, that was to be my wedding ring. If I don't get married, I was going to hold on to it and pass it to the next generation of my family. Plus, it means so much to me. I cherish the ring because it is one of the few things I have to remember my grandparents by. My brother and his girlfriend will actually use the ring though, and I feel like I am being selfish for not just letting them have the ring. My parents agree that I should keep the ring because my grandmother wanted me to have it and that I should make it very clear to my brother that it is my ring and he is just borrowing it. But I still feel very guilty. So will I be an a-hole if I tell my brother he is only borrowing my grandmother's ring to propose to his girlfriend? Update 1. I love my brother, but I know who he is. That being said, I still have allowed him to take advantage of me, just to keep the peace which is something I need to change about myself. Today, I am telling him he can't have the ring. The problem now is, he may still take it, because it is at my parents' home, and he will be there for Thanksgiving, which I won't be attending because, you know, restrictions. My parents are just as big pushovers as I am, and will let him take it. But I am going to talk to them as well, 
and hopefully this won't happen. When it is safe for me to do so, I will be moving it to a safety deposit box, so he will never have access to it again. Update 2. I spoke with both my parents. The ring is in their safe, and they assured me my brother will not have access to it. I also need to make it very clear that his plan is not fair not only to his girlfriend, but to me. Moving forward, I thought a nice solution would be for me to help my brother pick out a ring his girlfriend would love. I know her taste, and actually know of a jewelry store near me that she loves. I was going to talk to him about this all today, but I am going to wait until tomorrow, after I find some nice options for him to choose from. Yes, OP will be an a-hole if she loans that ring. She would only get that ring back if she took her brother to court and sued for it back. Loaning it to her brother is setting both of them up for a lifetime of conflict. If OP loans that ring to her brother, she is being a bad steward of the family heirloom. It's not what OP's grandmother would have wanted, since she gave it to OP. OP should not let heirlooms get stolen, just because she can't say no when it's warranted and wants to please her brother. I'm 19 and my brother is 22. Two years ago, my parents got divorced. Four months later, it was revealed that the reason for the divorce was that my dad was transgender. In the matter of a minute, the man I grew up with died and replaced by a completely different person named Kate. My brother did not take the news well and cut Kate out of his life for a while. For me, I have been supportive of her transition while grieving at the same time. For Thanksgiving, Kate invited my brother and I over for dinner with her partner. It took a lot of convincing to get my brother to go. Dinner was going okay, until Kate stated it would be her greatest wish if we called her mom. My brother yelled absolutely not and stormed out. When Kate looked at me for support, I told her that I would never call her mom or see her as such. Later that night, I received a text from Kate's partner, who said Kate was extremely hurt by the rejection. I didn't know how to handle the text, so I showed it to my brother. He called Kate and yelled at her for trying to emotionally manipulate me. Since Thanksgiving night, neither of us have talked to Kate. When I recounted the story to one of my friends, she said that I was technically an a-hole for sicking my brother on Kate and never standing up for her or acknowledging her wish. After hearing that, my emotions have been more complicated. So I have decided on a second opinion. So what am I? Edit. Some additional info. When she came out, Kate asked my brother and I to stop calling her dad immediately and just Kate. Kate's partner is a woman. My mom did initiate the divorce. Kate being trans was the biggest issue, but there were other reasons as well, such as Kate having an emotional affair with her now partner. I didn't find this out until much later, and my brother definitely doesn't know. I don't think OP is an a-hole. It's tough for transgender people today in our climate, especially when it comes to family members accepting them. But OP's father, still OP's father by birth, needs to understand OP went 17 years knowing him as dad. She was dad. She can't expect OP at the drop of a hat change all that. On top of that, her partner is trying to push that and is being manipulative by messaging OP that. They're trying to guilt trip OP. OP's brother's reaction seemed over the top, but OP was not. These things take time, and OP's father needs to understand what she's erasing, asking OP to call her mom. My husband and I have been married for five years and recently had twins. Now that life is settling down, ha! We met with our lawyers to update our wills and do all that proper legal things that people should do once having kids. Part of that was setting up legal guardianship for the twins. We asked my best friend and her husband. They agreed and it's all sorted out. Which brings us to our current problem, my husband's sister. We had dinner over the weekend with my husband's family. We mentioned that we updated our wills. My sister-in-law asked if that included guardianship for the twins and I said yes. My husband chimed in and said, we asked Sue and Chris, my best friend and her husband, and they agreed. Well, apparently that was the worst thing we could have said because sister-in-law started crying. She sat at the table, 
tears streaming down her cheeks, repeatedly questioning why we didn't ask her and how we could consider sending our kids to a non-family member. Isn't she good enough to raise our kids? How hurtful that was and how someone who wasn't family couldn't love the children like family would. Honestly, asking my husband's sister was never an option for us. While I care deeply about my sister-in-law, and she's a nice person, she wouldn't have raised our kids in a way that we would be comfortable with. She's highly religious, like church or church-related activity three or four days a week. In contrast, my husband and I are both atheists. Sister-in-law hasn't done any sort of post-secondary education and barely graduated high school undiagnosed learning disability. Because of that, school and education just aren't important to her, nor is following current events. Sister-in-law herself has admitted that current events stress her out and she'd rather ignore them. My husband and I both have master's degrees in our fields and believe in the importance of education. Some sort of post-secondary or vocational school is expected. Finally, this one may seem shallow, but sister-in-law is morbidly obese. She's 33 and struggles health-wise. Knee issues, diabetes, breathing problems, untreated sleep apnea, migraines, other aches and pains. Physically, she's just not capable of potentially raising kids, in my opinion. Put it all together, and she's just not someone we'd want raising our kid, no matter how much we love her. She does have many good qualities. She exemplifies kindness. She's hardworking. She's got a wicked sense of humor. We want her in our children's lives, just not in a potential parental role. In contrast, we joke with my best friend and her husband how the four of us are essentially the same couple. Our lifestyles and parenting philosophies and religious beliefs couldn't be more similar. My husband and I both believe that they would do as good a job, if not better, in raising our kids as we would. My friend and her husband would ensure that our kids maintain a relationship with our families, which is important to us. It was a simple and logical choice. I should also note that we didn't pick my brother and his wife for guardians either. I love them, but they want to travel and they live a very nomadic life. They're a great uncle and aunt, but would be crap parents. I discovered yesterday that my sister-in-law had deleted me from her social media childish, but the ultimate F.U. in her world. She's also refusing to speak with us because we've shown we don't care about family and don't trust her with our kids. Is there any way we can mend this fence? It has nothing to do with not caring about family and everything to do with what's in the best interest of our children. Is there anything we can do to make this better? How sister-in-law reacted is not okay. It is childish and manipulative. Of course it's OP's and her husband's choice, but I feel for sister-in-law, because they are so mean to sister-in-law. And OP is not very nice in her description of her too. Of course it hurts. She's not good enough for OP to take care of the kids she adores. Of course that hurts to the core. And the reason she's not good enough are her big insecurities. On top of that, she wants to have kids, but likely never will. She helped OP and her husband out a ton, and she's a close friend, and then they blindside her like that. I'm not saying OP made the wrong choice, just that I understand her position.